This Travolta story is like the most wonderful, loving story ever to say to someone, you've done it already. That's a pretty profound thought. And, and, and everything's taken care of. So nice. That's thoughtful. So you so did. You thought this was something you should do. Yeah. 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 Because I didn't want my son to have to go through it. And I didn't want uh, Stephanie you wanna, to go Can through I say it. something? That is the most loving thing you could do. And says, we got to work on your act. He kicks everyone out of the room. <laughs> And yep. says, you're not, there are certain things you could be doing. He goes, your jokes are good, but I want to talk to you about owning the stage, your presentation. That is such a loving thing. What a hustle. It really is. And the other thing that I, I say, it's a romance between you two guys. Uh, because uh, the fact that you had an agent before Matt, and then you said to Matt, hey, Matt, I got an agent. Um, why don't you go talk to him? I want to share him with you. I got to tell you, you might not think that's a big deal. I think that's a big deal. I would be like, fuck Matt Damon. I do not want to. He's, he's pretty good. I don't want to share my agent with him. I want my agent focused on me. I need some separation from this guy. This that's that is the most loving thing you could do for another human being to to say, hey, really. Is. And when I think about your early life, I thought that you would be the guy who would be filled with anger and resentment because you lost your mother at 14. I always say this, how are you so kind and loving and not bitter about that experience? I'm a father of three daughters. And I, you know, when my babies were born, I love these, you know, you look at them and you, I, I get the chills thinking about how exciting it is and they're learning and they're growing and then they start to walk and you're so in love with your child. What I'm saying is the part, the fact that you were too busy for the kids and other things was not... I wasn't too busy for the kids. I, I spent lots of time with my kids. But what I, when I needed to. I mean, that's so what, when you wanted to. Right. And what happened? <laughs> yeah, well, well, well our relationship as a couple fizzled. Where did that come from? Yeah. It happened from, like, it's just like the same you've gone out with guys that, like, you're the boyfriend before Mr. X... Where things, for some reason, go sour. Yeah, it's because you're not there. I know. I, I, Emily called me. She goes, Dad, uh, I, I talked to the New York Post, and I don't know what happened to this article. Right. And I said, uh, I, I go, it's all right. I read it. I, she goes, it, the headline was that my daughter's afraid to date. Me. Meanwhile, she was just in a relationship. I don't know what. I said, what's that about? She goes, I don't even know. <laughs> so How did they we get that? Left. I don't know. But my daughter is fantastic. My, my three daughters are fucking amazing. And I, I'm very blessed. I have such a great relationship with them. And I really do. And Welcome, ladies and gents, to QF, a podcast about Howard Stern. I'm your host, Phil Moore, a.k.a. Jim Fix. And with me back in the saddle is Len Young. How are you, sir? I'm good. It's good to be back. It's been uh, it's been a while. It's Long while. while since we've last been able to record, yeah. And, I'm, uh, uh, Bob. Yeah, sorry, go on. No, Bob, Bob and Sam are going to be recording this weekend, I believe, if they haven't already. And uh, we're trying to get back into the swing of things and get more people involved because we uh, a lot of people were just we were even we were not available to record. So we're kind of catching up now. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say I've been catching up on a few episodes myself listening and um I was listening to I went, some of the Wayne episodes. I was really enjoying because of the you know the, the probably shared interest. But I I was shocked to on to learn that there's a new Spinal Tap film coming out, which really sent a shiver down my spine. Uh, never go back, you know. This is the, this is the problem. This is like a manager going back to a team that he once had success with, thinking the same thing's going to happen again. Lightning well, never strikes twice. It rarely does. I know that I remember that uh, Michael Palin and, and John Cleese, Jamie Lee Curtis and Kevin Klein went back and teamed up to do this film called Fierce, Fierce Creatures That's right. long after uh, Fish Called Wanda. And it was it was a, a, an exercise in futility. They just shouldn't have done it because it was always going to be compared to Fish Called yeah. Wanda and, and unfavorably. And it's very rare. I mean, even the Python guys, when they get together and they do concerts, I mean, if, if it's a and a thing, there's nothing to live up to. But if they try to actually do sketches again, I think it's a disaster most of the time. Yeah. You're not yeah. – uh, it's just a different era. You can't capture, as you said, lightning in a bottle twice. I remember arguing with somebody uh, – this is when – remember the Ghostbusters all-female reboot they did? And I had a problem with it. And back then – I remember at the time, if you had an issue with it, it was almost like you hate women type thing. Yeah, in cell. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I, my point at the time was, and I still stand over it, which is they tried to remake it with the same cast, the same yes. director, the same everything. And it was awful. 
Mm -hmm. And and when you look back on a movie like that, and it's the same with Spinal Tap as well, the the reason why that movie works is there's something there that you can't quite put your finger on, especially with Bill Murray's performance. And there's a spontaneity to it. And there's a way of just there's a, there's something that you pick up on watching it that makes it fun. Some mm -hmm. of the ad lib lines and Spinal Tap is no different. Um, even though they had these set pieces that they'd pre-written with the the you old know, closing over Derek Smalls on the stage and he can't get out of it and all these things, the Stonehenge, mm -hmm. all of it is ad libbed in terms of you know the fine detail of the discussions and all that, and it's very hard to uh, think that the same thing is going to happen again. And I I think Wayne is right. There's they could they had an opportunity to maybe turn them into this kind of desperate like a 80s Duran Duran or something like that but yeah. no they're sticking with the same and they're just i think they're just too old for it now um I think so too um the like uh, the Christopher Guest films you know they they kind of they kept going until they i don't i don't think they the last one the for your consideration i don't think was as good as that what what came before it and uh you again it musicians movie stars authors they all have a, a funny thing that follows them their past and when it's when they get to a such a a high point it's almost impossible to recreate that or even m like to to match it let yeah, alone I better it the problem with the chris guest movies right is that they just started great and they got progressively worse and i think yeah. one of the reasons for that is if you watch them they all are identical in terms of the structure and this so obviously this guy is very rigid in terms of how he um views making a movie and how it's going to turn out and the, you know the, mm. his his planning around it the last one they actually made was mascots on netflix did you see that no yeah it was terrible and yeah. they, they're, they're just they're just getting worse every time. I think Best in Show was probably the finest one. Or Waiting for I, Guffman. Yeah. Waiting for Guffman be, be, was great. Waiting Guff for Guffman gets, I think, a lot of people. But for me, Best in Show and uh, A Mighty Wind was was entertaining, but it wasn't good. Best in Show was fantastic. Uh, <laughs> Fred Willard, <laughs> he just yeah, stole that amazing. movie. He was so good. <laughs> Did you hear Fred? Um, Michael McKean was on Gilbert's podcast. And he told a story about Fred Willard and he said that what Fred Willard does when he stays in a hotel is if he's anywhere near the lift where the, the bell sound is, he will he brings a toolkit with him. Or he brought, sorry, he's passed now, but he mm. brought a toolkit with him and would would um, disconnect the bell on the, <laughs> on the elevator. Yeah, this is something he did routinely. I mean, the guy, I think, I, I think he was quite eccentric. But uh, my yeah. God, again, an, an example of somebody who just had it. He yeah. could just look at the camera and make you laugh. He was yeah. fantastic. Completely. He's just like, like um, I was thinking of comedy legends. Uh, him would be, he would be one, definitely Bob Newhart, yeah. uh, who still to this, like even at, at whatever, he was on the Big Bang Theory as a guest star and he was, Maybe and part of it is the, the acceptance over the years, like the decades yeah. of Bob Newhart. He just gets that immediate sort of approval, but he's likable and he's yeah. still got it. He's still got like the, the the feeling, you know. He's still got the funny bone, and you can't turn that off. Do you remember in Waiting for Guffman? They, there's a scene with Eugene Levy and um, and uh, Catherine O'Hara, and they're they're going out and uh, dinner, two couples, and uh, you could tell it's all improvised because Catherine O'Hara is just like has to put her head down because she's laughing but uh, yeah he said the guy says uh well god i forgot fred willard says you know i had to go uh, get corrective surgery once i had what most guys dream of <laughs> and <you're>, Rob, <laughs> eugene levy's like what are you talking about and he goes penis reduction penis reduction <laughs> and you could just see everyone like the, the body's shaking you know yeah you can't control they can't control it <laughs> anyway guys uh, we uh len and i decided ages ago we'd uh, give the dice owing already five thousand bucks video uh run through and i remember at the time specifically but the, well i'll do give the setup for those of you who may not remember basically art uh dice made good with howard again came back on serious didn't it long form interview which was actually okay it was interesting mm -hmm. i mean not from a human interest perspective it was good but then uh it just wasn't funny and then when he came back it, it, he progressively got a little bit funnier i <laughs> love when he brought, brought uncle lee in who was like almost a motivational <laughs> speaker <laughs> andrew who could who else could calm you but me 
<laughs> it's such a contrast. Anyway, um, but then he he pushed Artie to do a gig with him where Artie opened for him, and then he was going to pay him five grand. Now, the problem was Artie was making easily five, ten times that amount on his own for a stand-up gig at that point. And Dice really could not sell out jack shit. Like, he was probably doing 500 seaters, 1,000 if he was lucky at that time. But when he got back to Stern... And when he was, he was also doing O and A at the time, I believe. And uh, unless he was feuding with them when he got back with Howard and vice versa, either way, um, when already got involved and it was a serious event, they started booing Dice. They, you know, when he got up on stage, and I think it was all about. Um, I mean, it was an arty crowd. That was that was the thing. And you cannot. It's like going to see going to an open air festival, and you know, ACDC's playing at Lil- Lilith Fair or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not your crowd. <laughs> and uh, but he never paid Artie back, or he didn't pay him back immediately. And then Artie mentioned it on the air, and I think there was some bone of contention. Your theory was that Dice deliberately. This was something he did so that he could get more airtime. I think it's I think it's possible that he did he did it purely just to get back on on the air. But also, I uh, it's very hard to know this without getting inside his head and knowing him personally. But I think it's also possible that it was just a bit of a him trying to assert a bit of control over the situation. I th- I think when he went out and did that show, he realized I'm yesterday's man, you know, mm-hmm. and this guy already is a bit of a hack, and he's now getting all the, you know, he's get, making more money than me. He's got the crowd calling after him. And, all, and I think this was a way of maybe Dice just saying, trying to put Artie back in his box a little bit and just, you know, ruffle his feathers a bit. And he, and of course he knew this is going to get me back on the air and then maybe we can do another gig, you know, create a bit of buzz, create a bit of noise with the audience. Who knows? My yeah, take... So, my take was the same as the uh, Will and Fred not giving him a wedding gift or, you know, selling him it's in the mail, that kind of thing. Uh, I think it was a similar situation that he wasn't actually going to pay him. He was going to wait for him to approach him with the money but yeah. to see if he could get away with not paying him just because he wanted to. I think he wanted to see, did he, did he have the balls to come and collect it? Yeah. Like, is he going to, you know, it's just five grand and he's making all that money. Let's see if he'll even bother. Because if you don't ask, you don't get. Um, I, I, now, it's not not a nice thing to think about someone that they're going to stiff you something that they promised you. But um, he does like to fuck with people. His opening acts, Jim Florentine mm. told us all about it. Um, and it, you're right. It might have been a like a power play. Like, let's see if you'll cross this line. And it's not a line. There's no real line. You're owed that money. But. Um, I think he he wanted to see test Artie's metal, so to speak. Yeah, it's a, it's a like I remember the first job I ever had. Uh, there was a guy when I walked in. He said, "Have you any odds?" And that meant, "Have you any change?" And I said, "Why?" And he goes, "I oh, just gives gives a lender two quid or whatever." And I did. And someone said to me, "He said you won't be getting that again. You'll be seeing that." And I said, "Oh no, I'll get it back." And I went back to him and. Uh, he just goes, no, don't have it, don't have it. And I eventually just gave up on it and said, it's not worth pursuing this. But then a few weeks later, someone new started and he was straight over. Do you have any odds? He got two. So everyone knew that came in, he just took two quid off them. But it was almost his way of just asserting it. It was a bit like um, a cat pissing in, in the yard, you know what I mean? To kind of say, mm-hmm. this is my this is my domain. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Funny you mention odds because that, like, there's a term in Newfoundland, uh, they say, what odds? What odds by, which means no big deal. Okay, yeah. As very, I don't, don't, yeah, I, don't yeah. I have no idea. I used to think it meant what odds. What do you mean? What are the odds? What are the, what, what are are the, the chances odds? that you know? Like, and no, it's nothing to do with that. So again, lingo, Newfoundland lingo, guys, or as yeah. people say, Newfie. But don't say it to them. Ask them if that what they think of the term, because I've heard a lot of them. It is the N word. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> <we're>, <laughs> it literally is the N word. Anyway, we're gonna see if we how far we can get with this. Yeah, and that's Artie not, feels that's he nobody's sold fault. at least eight or eight or nine hundred seats there, and uh, but okay, that's not Dice's fault. He offered you five grand, and I took it. Yeah, that's no problem. But you're no just problem. pissed that you haven't gotten it. Absolutely. I just want to know when I'm getting the money. All right, let me get to Dice. Dice probably has an explanation for all this. I'll let you guys work it out. Fair enough, because I know it's uncomfortable to do this in real life. Sure. Oh, it's not uncomfortable here at all. <laughs> uh, I think yeah, yeah. it's less uncomfortable here if, if it's sort of, you know, oh, on the dear. air. Hey, Dice. Yeah, it's not uncomfortable. Good morning, soldier. <laughs> Dice, what happened here? Uh, you right. explain it. You talk to Artie. I'll stay out of it. Okay, but I, I sort of need to know 
what did happen because I got oddball calls yesterday. Right. Here's what happened. I'm not sure exactly. Why did you tell him, Artie? Well, nothing happened. I just said, Howard asked how the gig went. I said it was great. The crowd was great. I said Dice did a great job. But um, I haven't gotten paid for it yet. <laughs> That's all. And I said, I'm just wondering when I'm getting paid. Well, you were a little more. And, you, you were a little and I said, I, I am mad about it. All right. Uh, number one. All right. If you're mad about it, that's OK. You know what I mean? That's, a, that's not what the issue. Did you tell him? <laughs> Who cares? If you're mad about it. <laughs> By the way, guys, we should preface this. We think you've already heard it in previous episodes, but Len and I both are addicted. James, too. We, we're, we're all addicted to Ice Dice's Instagram or his TikTok. They're both the same. They're identical. He has mastered the art form. Yeah, it is. It's, it is just I was actually watching it this morning. Uh, just the latest one. It is that uh, beautiful kind of uh, example of just confusion and awkwardness. And cr it's, it's, just, I don't know where he got the idea from, but obviously the more he does it, the funnier it gets. Yeah. And it's, it's, yeah, it's beautiful. Anyone, um, anyone who hasn't checked it out should really go on and check it out. They're, they're very easy to digest. They're, each video is about 15 seconds. Yeah, that at the the longest, like uh, the longest you might find, maybe forty five seconds, but even that's stretching. It's usually about yeah, under under thirty seconds is the sweet spot. And um, you're right, it's it's um, it's his world, and we're all just living in it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is what that that is exactly what that sh thing should be. It shouldn't be girls dancing in front of a the you know the Holocaust memorial. You know, <laughs> in the line dancing. I'm not honestly there's there's people because these fucking Instagram whores, they're all going like, you know, uh, like selfies at Auschwitz and stuff like that. And uh, <laughs> which is just I didn't see that when I was yeah. there, but I did see an Italian couple making out on the bus between Camp One and Camp Two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nothing, yeah. nothing if it like it didn't even affect them one iota. That's how yeah. that's how awful it was like they went to fucking pop a pizza for, for a pepperoni or something. It's it like a dabbing at ground zero. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jesus. Before you got into that, how phenomenal the show was with us. Yes, I did. Of course, I Not did. Not just me, with you. What? What did do you, you mean? Did you tell them how you did? Yeah, I said we both did. We both did very well. It was no, great. Just now, you said Dice did a good job. Like you were, you know, sort of judging my performance. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is judging your performance. No, no, well, he asked me how it went. Know what I'm saying? We. The reason we did this show, we wanted to see how we would be as a team together performing. And it, you know, I'm still raving about the show. Well, Artie said that you were great. He was great. Uh, okay. Artie did say probably that he was just as responsible for bringing in the crowd as you were. Okay. And he kind of was saying. And as a free opening act, he was great. Yeah. He's, <laughs> and, and he said, not only did I accept $5,000, but really, I didn't get any money for it. And he, But Artie also said, I'm going to fill you in on everything, Dice, so you're not okay. in the dark. Artie said, look, Artie headlines shows, and he has other comedians working for him. He pays them that night on the spot, and he makes sure it happens. There's no reason uh, why Artie had to wait. Is that, am I misquoting you, Artie? No, that's exactly uh, right. No, okay. it's okay. I'll go through it with you. Okay, now, first off, this is the thing. I don't think for a minute there wasn't – there was. I don't think there was any other motivation for Dice except this is a chance for me to hitch my wagon to someone who's hot and get my name back out there. Don't, I, I, that, as, as much as I love him, I, I think he was, it, was, it was strictly business. I think so. I, I would like to know – because uh, this is in 2007, I would like, or two, is it, yeah, right 2006. Now, 2006. I would like to know exactly where his career was because I do remember after – this it would have been he he had a reality show and he was doing this whole i'm still the best back number one again and he was playing these like shoe boxes you know compared to what he was in the 80s well and he, he wasn't doing I, that well this is because this is before he got all those acting gigs remember he got the, the woody well, allen and blue jasmine and things like that. that's right that was all that's like uh in right that the 2010s is when they started yeah. getting some acting work again and the blue jasmine thing opened up a, a shitload of work for him so he, he started getting tv gigs and what have you he was in vinyl the first episode of vinyl which only lasted a season or half a season and he was great he was actually yeah. like he was in the opening episode and he just was perfect mm -hmm. but um but no what happened was was his albums, I can tell everybody exactly how, how bad it went. So Day of the Laughter Died was 1990, uh, 42 Long was 92, and at that point, it was it, he just, it, it, he'd been eaten up and chewed up. 
he he'd been chewed up and you know, spit out by the the press for the longest time, and the, so all of a sudden that comedy wasn't in vogue really anymore, so to speak. But also, you know, like a flavor of the month, he only had a shelf life of a few years where it was going to be that big, and then he had to you know either get another gig or um hopefully get um like you said acting work but then so through the 90s he released you know day the life to died part two like 93 and it's it's awful like it's not even as a fan i go this i understood what he was trying to do the same thing catch lightning in a bottle like we said yeah. but it it didn't work like it didn't it, mm-hmm. it works as a bad album it's it, shula g might be better <laughs> that's how bad it is yeah I, I don't know. I, I I still can't get through Shulogy or yeah. But uh, yeah, the day the laughter died is 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 masterful though. Uh, when you listen First to one. it, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, it really is. It's great to listen to. It, but yeah, I, I guess Dice's problem though, he's not Jonathan Winters. That he's, it's not that he can go on a show and the, his patter is is evergreen. That he can just keep doing it it was definitely of its time with the big yeah. shoulder pads and and all of that kind of 80s excess you know mm-hmm. and once you get yeah. into the 90s then and uh the way society you know yeah, culture shifts a little bit he suddenly looked so uh, past it and yesterday's man you know so it, yeah it seemed yeah right it was almost overnight it happened yeah. it seemed like it but but it's, so in the mid 90s he released in 95 he had one that was an internet only thing called filth it's now on on youtube of course and it literally was three cds of the dirtiest fucking shit you could imagine it was almost like the let's take this to the the nth degree of, of, of profanity and see how dirty we can get and that's exactly what it was and it really wasn't that funny at all then he did one in 2000 with this he, he's not on Amer- a def jam anymore so or deaf american as it was the rick rubens label mm. and he released an album called face down ass up <laughs> and it's just it looks like a shitty two live crew album cover and it, and it, well, there's again nothing funny about it so he was he was uh in the nadir of his of his career <laughs> and then he was doing o and a in the <laughs> early 2000s he hooked into o and a because he couldn't get on stern anymore that's that's <laughs> that's some title for a <laughs> <laughs> Face, yeah. uh, that means they're not his childhood memoirs, I think. <laughs> well, he did. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. He did um, uh, a series called "Bless This House" in '95. That's when he tried to tone down his image, and um, with Kathy Moriarty, who was um, in *Raging Bull* and uh, the okay. Mambo Kings, yeah. and uh, so he's ba- basically going to play like uh, Ralph Cramden. And I just, I just remember one good line when uh, it was, it was determined. Okay, they're gonna have to, like, he and the wife are gonna have to put up his mother. Uh, yeah. Like, and he, she goes, "Well, how long do we have to, you know, how long do we have to have her in the house?" And he just kind of offhandedly saying, "Until she dies." <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But here's here's one thing if I can find it. Let's see if uh, if I can get it on YouTube. Uh because he always would crowbar certain impressions in. Uh let's see. Bless this house. Dear Alice, I know we said no gifts, but I'm gonna risk the shot in the head and give you one anyway. This is just something to let you know how much I love you. And whatever happens, or should I say whatever we step in, we can get through it together. I'm your hunk of hunk of Christmas. Love, Baron. P.S. Hit the boombox and brace yourself. <laughs> Not to say a special to you, baby. I'll have a blue Christmas without you. I'll be so blue Just thinking about you <laughs> So he's going to do all of his movies <laughs> Anyway, so, so I'm sure I'm sure he had a lot of fun doing that kind of shit yeah. but uh but again he he said he came back to Stern that year or the following year when it got canceled and uh, he said they we, they tried to put a little edge in the character, and then he they just kind of watered it down too much, and he wasn't happy with it. He's never been happy, like you said, kind of like Rickles. He's never been captured well on any show. No, you know, and, and, not as himself. <laughs> but what there was that time he um, he went on CNN, 
And I love that. And he just started <laughs> swear, like put play that. That's a, like what, like what was the background to that? It, it to me, it looked like complete self destruction. Like, cause, um, cause, yeah, I don't remember the or was guy. He just, <laughs> I just or was he just? Ghost. And now coming up, Art Carney. <laughs> yeah, started a gym. Well, the, yeah, the guy says you started a gym, right. and he gets offended. This was like I think two thousand or the early two thousands. Okay. He was on on CNN just doing some. I can't. I can't. I think the guy got fired actually not long afterwards, and this might have been the episode that did it. So this was <laughs> Dice's Joe Buck move. <laughs> yeah. So here we go. Let's talk a little bit about uh, where your career has been. <laughs> I can't because never believe it. You, you know of course, I mean? you were you were a headline guy, I'm and still then a headline guy. You know what I mean? You, for a while, you popped out. Now you're coming back. For I a while, back, for a while, you were actually do, you, were you, know running, I mean? you were running a gym. Tell us about that. Running a gym? Weren't you so running you get, a gym at some point? You're supposed to be a news guy. Where you getting your <laughs> That's fucking information? That's our research. You aren't. You aren't. This is ridiculous. I come on CNN, and the guy don't even know what he's talking about. Go ahead. You at no point were you running a gym? No, no, running a Jim, what, no, you need to work out or something? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, with these guys. I come on the news for two seconds, and, and you want to say, every All time right. I do an interview, a guy wants to open his fucking mouth. Can't All even right, Andrew, do a little thank fucking you very much. Here. We thought that you, you should know, hold back. Go fuck yourself, you know what? <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll go back to uh, talking about Art Carney. <laughs> and we'll be back in just a moment. To fill you in on the Art <laughs> So I don't know the, the context, actually, because he explained it uh, on a later interview. And I just don't I, I, I don't know what he was there for to begin with, like plugging yeah. a gig, I suppose. It's really strange because he's he's in that, you know, 60 seconds, he literally just uh burnt any bridges of being on a news show ever again i mean oh yeah I, you know he really did i mean that's he would have been escorted out of the building straight away and told you know he's he would have never have been allowed near that place again well no that. yeah you're you're on a public on cnn christ you're getting they're getting fcc fines oh like, yeah yin yang for that kind yeah. of thing this is pre-janet yeah. jackson too so yeah, yeah. um but uh it's <laughs> just i mean i mean it's Great. is it less is it less cringeworthy than um you know Kat, katie kathy lee asking uh, marty short why he still you know how his marriage to his now dead wife has survived for so long <laughs> <laughs> first time i saw that my my jaw dropped and it was just um, unbelievable anyway i have no problem going through it with you but i don't know why you didn't just call me because number one i called up no this is what happened number one i didn't tell my pam that night i wait till i get paid and then i send the checks out okay so now what happened is i actually called you Artie. i was in florida like i don't know four or five days ago, and I actually left you another message going, call me up and leave me the address for your agent so I could send the check. Artie, did that happen? Back. I never so, got that message. So wait a minute, so wait a minute. So yesterday, when I got all these calls, I just got back to L.A. Sunday night. Artie, are you calling Dice a liar? Mm. Oh, no, I'm just saying, I don't know if something happened with the phone. I never got the that message. No, no, I left that message. You get a thousand messages from me. That one you didn't get. But... I'm telling you what I did. Yesterday, I did get to your agent, you know, and I said, give me your address. That was yesterday. And the check out. But, Dice, was that a reaction to Artie complaining what, on the air? What bothers me, no, no, what bothers me, no, I've been trying to call Artie just for that information. You know, I didn't come home from Atlanta. Artie's shaking his head that you're bullshitting. No, no, I, I'm saying I never got that message. Look, I wouldn't bullshit, I got no reason to bullshit him. Number one, you know, uh, what gets me crazier than everything is, is not the fact that you didn't get paid. I mean, I got no problem paying you. What bothers me more is that what I heard about that the show was half sold, mm. or Artie was on the show. That's true. No, but no I mean, that's what Artie said. When I first went on Howard's show, um, that time, the time I, I asked you, you know, whatever it was, whatever day that was. Right. There were 200 seats left to be sold. By the time I was done with Howard's show, they, this is why I give you all that credit, Howard. The, the tickets were gone. So well, you didn't really wasn't. need Artie is what you're saying. No, not for that show. If I would have went into the bigger room, and I'll tell you the truth, they were chanting for Artie to come out. I mean, you know, what's happened since I've come on your show is that, you know, I'm getting people that, that 
by Sirius coming to the show. Right. Whether it's now, <clears throat> so so at least okay, I give him credit for admitting that if he needed, he'd nef- definitely need another an opener if he had a, a bigger venue. But that's always been the way. I mm-hmm. mean, back in the day, he used to headline for he used to open for rock bands actually, Dice, mm-hmm. which is a throwback to the old days in Vegas where crooners would have comedians open up for them all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was um, famously in Goodfellas. I always think of that. the uh, wasn't that that they had a comedian opening up for one of the guys. Do you remember that? Do you remember that scene in Goodfellas with the comedian? Um, <coughs> my wife, uh, my wife says, uh, take me somewhere I've never been. Oh, so oh. I tried the kitchen. Oh, that was uh, Jenny Youngman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <at> the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> and, uh, well, the, so the idea that, you know, he, uh, he, you know, he, this, this serious XM thing again, not, not Dice's crowd. And I think at that point, especially, People definitely had the opinion like he's done, he's over. It's been like 15 years since the rhymes, and uh, you know, and then maybe Sam Kinison, if he were alive, wouldn't age that well. I don't, I believe, I don't believe that's true because I've heard his post, uh, the 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 posthumous album. Um, I think it's called Live from Hell, and it's great. He does topical stuff. He talks well, all the time. Yeah. He talks about JFK. He talks about <laughs> that was my favorite bit, yeah. the JFK bit, the bill, uh, like the war in Iraq. Um, you know, yeah. the, the the smart bomb. <laughs> I love that yeah, bit. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> no, I th- I think even though they both had their their gimmicks you know yeah obviously yeah. with um obviously we had the screaming you know you had the the nursery rhymes and all that but i think um god his name my, my memory's gone who the comedian we're just talking about it's kennison kennison sorry jesus sorry yeah even with him you had uh content there that was smart and just really well put together i when i think of him the first thing i think of is the um the starving children. Oh, you know? it's just, it's, I mean, it's that one of is the best, top yeah, 10 bits is. of all time. I think so. Yeah. It's, it's, it is like listening to, you know, a great, like John Coltrane or something. It's like yeah. one of the great, it really is. It's just, <laughs> Scream it's, Supreme. Yeah, it's phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> just remember, get, take that sandwich away. It doesn't look, it doesn't work yeah. unless he looks hungry. <laughs> you see what this is? This is sand. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite, one of my favorite bits of his was just sort of uh, like he, he used to change that bit every so often. But um, there's one where uh, <laughs> Craig Gass did a, a version of it where he's like, you know, uh, not, not that bit, but the, the, the Jesus one where he goes, you know, he could heal. That's a that's a that's a, a bad one, you know. People, the sick will follow you wherever you go. <laughs> you can't even take a piss. There's always some gun loser going, "Oh Jesus, can you take a look at this?" He goes, "Jesus," yeah. and then he's got his image, like he goes to the wall. He goes, "Yeah, I'll be out in a few minutes. Can you fucking wait a second? <laughs> yeah, you see, I don't think Dice's material was ever as funny as that. Never, yeah, never, as never much. Would, like it's, but it's it's different. It's a different type it's of. It's different. Uh, I love I love that old. I think, I think it's great. And I I totally agree. It hasn't aged well. Um, mm-hmm. And I I think of, uh, Kinnison's. I think Kinnison's, uh The riffs would age a lot better. The you know, the oh. the the, uh, the attitude and the opinion he had. But uh, you could perfectly <laughs> transpose that into. Can you imagine what he would say about people in twenty twenty four? You know, oh, I he'd mean, have a field day. Absolutely. Him and absolutely. Bill Hicks alone, like the two of them yeah. together would be, would just be unstoppable. Uh, even then the third album, which was shit, the uh, leader of the band, which half of it is him doing rock stuff. And it's, it's really just like covers and it's awful. Although the video that Sam did for Mississippi Queen is funny. He imitates yeah. Sinead <laughs> O'Connor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, the dancing, you know, with the dress on. Anyway, um, at one point he does that bit about the, you know, the drug war, the war against drugs. And he goes, he goes, um, uh, uh, the drug war, you know, he goes, what the fuck happens if you're captured? I guess, you know, you got to go to those drug war camps. <laughs> he goes, <laughs> oh, they beat us. They made us do their blow. <laughs> Put me on the front lines. <laughs> oh, God. It, Must anyway. go back and listen to it again. It's it's that that album's awful, but the the one the two the first two were great. And the sub the, the like I said, the uh, the the last one is great. Um uh, and the, the the bit about JFK and the uh, the P trops mm. in Vegas just fucking destroy me. <laughs> How do I know there's not a guy at the other end of the, that P trop going? Oh, this is my dream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hicks had a great thing about uh, JFK as well. He said uh, 
I think it was something to do with God. It started with God, and he said, "You know, do you think if he ever comes back here, do you think the, he's ever going to see if want want to see a cross again?" Yeah. Uh, he said, "It's like, like going uh, up to Jackie with the yeah, rifle pendant." With the pendant yeah, <laughs> just thinking of John. Just thinking of John, Jackie. <laughs> he was phenomenal, man. Yeah. Way way too young. Yeah. In, in whether it's in Florida, whether it's in Vegas, Atlantic City, all I wanted to do was finally team up with Artie because I heard about his performing ability. And, you know, team up like these guys do, the, uh, you know, the blue collar guys, these guys. So, you know, people have been telling me about Artie, so I said, well, let's try this. Now, if we would have... See, I'm going to be honest with you. Artie thinks... No, but let me... Can I tell you what Artie thinks? Okay. Because Artie's not man enough to tell you himself. No. No, no, no. Are you scribbling notes? No, no, no. I don't understand what you... Artie told me something. Let me ask him about what he just said, though. Okay. Um. So you you say... Are you claiming that before I announced that I was going to be a part of the Borgata show, you had already sold it out. No, I'm saying there were 200 tickets left to sell when I came on Stern show. And that's what I'm saying. And then when now, I, what I am saying this, I'll admit to when we announced or you announced that you're going to do the show with me, I got calls to go into the bigger room. Let's open this up and go into the, uh, they have a bigger room there. Either that or add a second show. Because there were so many calls coming in, we could have done a second show, and that I would have I would have given you a lot of credit for. And you know what? If we would have done that, I would have even gave a lot more money because you would have had a lot to do with that that second show. Okay, I get it. So that that part I agree with. But when would I have gotten this money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. I mean, I'm listening to this and I'm thinking, maybe I'm going to change my mind a bit on this here because. Like Dice is sounds like someone who is talking in circles trying to buy eat up time here. Exactly. Like he doesn't really have an answer at all. And mm -hmm. maybe, just maybe, he was blindsided by this and he didn't expect it to come up on the air. And now he's suddenly kind of humming, 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 humming trying to because he's he's doing a great job here of deflecting and misdirecting and, and talking around, but he's not talking at all about the five grand. He's talking about everything right. but. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And, 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 and truth be told, he was, he was on the balls of his ass if career wise. I mean, he was, he talked about having to, you know, gamble and doing black, like blackjack in Vegas in order to make ends meet, but like you make, and he had a bad gambling addiction. He lost like millions mm -hmm. of dollars uh, on, uh, on gambling. And he said, I won a bunch too. And da, da, da. Mm -hmm. like, well, no, yeah, everybody talked about their wins, <laughs> but he talked yeah. about his losses as well. And, uh, he probably needed that five grand more than people would think. Well, let's just, uh, to, to borrow a, a line from Marty DeBerge from Spinal Tap, let's just say that uh, his appeal had become more selective by 2006. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking great line. <laughs> yeah, when is he getting his money? Well, it's in a trust, Artie. You know what I mean? Dice has actually invested it for you, and he's waiting to watch it grow. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't know he wanted a paper bag that night. <laughs> well, but Dice, come on, you work with comics. You get paid that night or the next next day i mean come on the next day i, I got i gotta live my life i gotta get back to la and take care of business that's what happened. Well, I gotta live my life too. <laughs> that's that's bullshit. Yeah. Dice does not. He's not leaving a venue without his money. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but the, the opening, the opening acts, and the, and uh, truthfully, he'd probably pay like even lesser uh, comics, like maybe five hundred bucks to open up for him, and he'd probably pay them himself, knowing he'll get you know the majority, the rest of the money that that night or the the following night. It doesn't make sense. It, like, yeah. it, his story here doesn't make sense, which is, I got to sort my business out. Well, well the, surely sorting your business out means getting money. Now, if you right. did get, if you did get what, like it, it looks poor then if he got paid, but didn't make the phone call beforehand to say, I need this split into two. I need mm -hmm. five for Hardy and whatever the remainder for me. Yeah. So like, surely that's what would have happened, but it didn't. And uh, then how long does it take for him once he gets home and sorts <laughs> his business out? Like, what does that involve? Like, well, yeah, it's like, what is it coming by carrier pigeon? I mean, like the <laughs> fucking Pony Express. The other thing is, it's not like you go to the cheesecake factory and tell them, listen, uh, I'll have a, I'll have a whatever, you know, <laughs> this and that, and yeah. uh, I'll pay you when I get back to L.A. <laughs> 
You know, I, know. I mean, I mean, he's yeah. he's a certain whether it's a plumber, like you do that with a plumber or an electrician. Listen, and, and unless it's a family, like a neighborhood or a village, obviously, like I know, you know, barter system or y'all, I, I know you'll get me next week when payday comes or whatever. I get that. You're good for it. But yeah. He's never worked with uh, ha- uh, dice before, so he has no idea what's going on. So I guarantee, I, I'm, I'm firm in my belief that dice tried to not pay him and see if he had, he had the balls to ask for it. This isn't like corporate life where you, 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 you carry out work and then you have to invoice the company and they have to process the invoice and run it through right. and send. You know, this is as close to cash in hand as it gets, but it's check in hand and that's it. Yeah. And uh, that's why, that's why Dice is, I would say, on the back foot from the get-go here with this. But let's yeah. just hear what kind of creative uh, uh, reasoning <laughs> and meandering we get here. Oh, lots. And when Ralph calls in, <laughs> Jesus. What, couldn't you get out of town, Artie? Look, you aren't depending on your life for the, you know, since you said it on the air, the five grand I gave you. And, you know. You don't know that. What does that have to do with anything? Yeah, Artie's exactly. absolutely right there. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. I hate so, that. I hate when people think counting other people's money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, uh, it's it's uh, distasteful to say the least, and yeah. uh, you know you should always be taking care of business, no matter what. I mean, TCB baby, uh, <laughs> the the, the uh, <laughs> you know you've got to. Um, uh, I remember it was that famous. It was that not famous, but it's a story in uh, the Elvis, the Memphis Mafia book that I, I reference every so often. Elvis was always like when someone would wanted to borrow money from Elvis, they'd ask him to see him privately because. And Elvis yeah. was always he, he always had this attitude like he knew what was coming and he didn't. He didn't. You know, he's like, oh god. You know, he loved giving stuff. He hated being asked. To right. he, he was very you know, generous to a fault, but he understood giving away rings and cars and stuff, and not not cash. So, but what happened was Marty, his his uh, employee, said, "Look, uh, you know, a lot, last year when you gave me money for blah blah blah, I've saved up a lot. I've been working on the railroad, and here's three hundred of the whatever you gave me. I'll I'll pay the rest as soon as I can." And Elvis was like, he had tears in his eyes afterwards. And he said, "You don't know what this means to me. Like no one's ever paid me back." Wow. And then he said, forget Sad. it, keep it. Like he said, keep, he said, keep, keep it. Like you need it more than I do. And it just, the thought that you, 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 you even considered, you know, paying me back means more than the actual money. And, you know, if you don't, I'll burn it anyway. So keep it, you know. One of my uh, favorite um, Elvis stories was, uh, and, it, and it was so funny when I read it because the, the, the article itself was about food. It was about Elvis's diet and all this. Uh, and one of the stories was that, he got a sandwich one time in like Denver or somewhere mm-hmm. that was called oh, I fool, remember. Fool's Gold, right? So it was basically he, he, like he four flew pounds there for a of peanut butter and sandwich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he chartered the plane, right, yeah, to buy yeah. this massive sandwich that would, you know, like no wonder the guy uh, died at 44 or whatever it was. But what made me laugh thinking about it afterwards was, he must have been out of his, I'd say he was off his mash when he did that. He must have been like, that's the type of thing that someone does when they're up like five o'clock in the morning, just doing, you know, loads of drugs. And they go, let's just, like, there's no way he was in a uh, clear state of mind when he decided to charter a plane to buy a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mentioned that picture of Elvis with Nixon meeting him in the White House, and oh, he, he looks, looks like he looks, looks, he looks like a vampire. <laughs> he looks like he's been up all night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he's he's totally fucked at that stage. Yeah. Well, those guys said there was a year. There was a year, or I think, where he ate the same exact meal three times a day. Like not 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 this one meal three times a day, but the same th- breakfast, lunch, and dinner was the same for like a year. <laughs> What was like, it, I wonder. I don't remember, but it would like he said <laughs> he liked the the bacon fried so hard you couldn't. No, he liked the egg fried so hard you couldn't drive a nail through it. <laughs> <laughs> it was all like southern oh, food God. and stuff, you know, like whatever. But and um, you know, it, it wasn't uh, it wasn't quite Zappa's burnt weenie sandwich, but it was uh, you know a lot of uh, he loved soul food basically. He and, used to uh, eat. He used to eat over thirty yogurts a day at one point. Yogurts. Yeah, he used to love eating yogurts, apparently, in the jungle room. Interesting. I was in maybe his house. A, maybe, like, as a, <clears throat> maybe as a weight loss-like thing during his fatter years, obviously. 
Yeah, that's kind of maybe that, maybe that's the way. Maybe they were low fat, you know. And he thought maybe if I eat loads of them, I'll lose weight. <laughs> but uh, I was in his, I was in Graceland, and I kept staring at the kitchen. I was just looking around at all the. Now it's obviously all cleaned up, polished. Like, but I was looking yeah. at it, just thinking, God, all this stuff was made here. All that yeah. stuff that you know blocked up his ass. <laughs> My favorite is they still got one of the TVs he shot out is in there still. <laughs> <laughs> I got a, I got a TCB lighter in the gift shop in, um, yeah. uh, and I fucking lost it. And I, it was back when I smoked, I was a Zippo, you know, and I lost it. But um, mm-hmm. they had over there, they had um, uh, Elvis coffee. And I was going to get, so I should have bought all this stuff and brought it back. But I just thought they could have, they missed an opportunity there. <laughs> like, because they could have tied it in with constipation, like coffee animals. Coffee, yeah, something. <laughs> you know, this will get you moving. Uh, with well, Alice he coffee. was he was he had he was big on fleet enemas back in the day because he was because the drugs made him so constipated and he was yes. uh, he was you know and he was in such great pain at one point they had to take him to the hot emergency room. The doctor said it's trapped gas. <laughs> it's an unborn <laughs> fart. <laughs> We're, gonna <need> a- <laughs> We're gonna need a cesarean. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, after oh, certain God. operations, they like they, you know, they, they, you know, they, they, they <laughs> it takes a while to get you to, sh- to fart, and they're like count down the days. Did you fart yet? Did you fart yet? <laughs> Poor Elvis was like that, except no, if no surgery. I feel, I mean, it, it is sad because he was when you watch him, he was there with all that trapped gas inside him, and then he was wearing a corset. That must mustn't have been comfortable. And then he's trying to have, while he's wearing all this, with all this controlled chaos inside his body, he's trying to knock out American Trilogy. <laughs> the poor bastard. Lamar said, he, he looked at he's Jesus, look at the size of him. If he puts on that jumpsuit and it busts, he's going to kill the first three rows from shrapnel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. It's like a bomb going off. Poor Elvis. Yeah. Anyway, it's look, a, he okay. was, got, Lord rest him, he was... Uh, he was, the, he was arguably one of the, arguably the greatest. <laughs> yeah, he was great. Loved him. It's, it has nothing it's my money. <laughs> I know it's your money, but, you know, I got to come back and take, when I come back out of town, the first thing I do is take care of everybody that's with me on the road and have all the checks sent out. I run it like a business. I'm not getting in my car and running to a... <laughs> Divvying car. up it's, cash? It's, it's the way. I'm all over the country. How do you do it, Artie, when you have comics working for you? You can ask anybody who's ever worked for me. That I either tell the guy who's promoting the gig, I say, listen, you got to cut this guy a check for this amount, me a check for this amount. If they have a problem with that, I make sure that that night the comic gets a check. All right. So either from my account, if Danny, I get the full amount, or Danny, from the guy. It's your fault that you didn't say dice. Can I get paid that night? I didn't know you expected to get paid that night. For fuck's sake. <laughs> I know. I'm telling you, he pocketed the entire thing because he probably was in, in fucking arrears or something and needed I'm, the full amount. I'm starting to think that way now. Because I've, I've, I listened to this. I haven't heard this in a while, but I my initial reaction was that if this was a kind of a stage to get on the air. But there's something about the way he's talking. There's something about... There's a little bit of uh, certainly desperation, and mm-hmm. he's he's just trying to obfuscate and dance around and not really answer it directly. I think you're right. I think he could have been, like you say, on the balls of his ass. Mm-hmm. And it's sad, really. It's sad to think, but I think you could be right. Well, yeah, and he, uh, of course, he had been through like a, a third, uh, like his second divorce or third divorce, yeah, the yeah. second divorce at that time, and like he's he's like Kevin Costner or, or John Cleese, who he's going on what do you call it, the the attorney tour or something like that, or the the uh, because he had so many awful divorces, he's completely fucking broke, and he's had to go out and you know uh, perform constantly at age whatever eighty or something and. Uh, 81 82 and it's it's just you know you never want to be in that situation if you can help it um but yeah i you know this may be a lazy generalization but i find you know if you if you if you're looking at a man who's in his who's on his fourth or fifth marriage it's a high likely chance that he's just an asshole i, yeah. I really do believe that <laughs> <laughs> I, they get they, five people, five women thought they could change them. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> it's, they realized it's like uh, hacking a redwood, hacking down a redwood with a toothbrush. It's just not going to fucking happen. <laughs> so anyway, we'll we'll continue with the uh, the dancing around.
I guess you know, that I guess it's my fault that I didn't specify. But it's ten days later, and I don't have the check. But you call your agent. I, I spoke to. I him. call my agents twenty times this week. Did you talk to him yesterday? Dice, I talked to him. A week. I had to go to Pittsburgh after it. we worked together, yeah. and I called him and I said, Dice didn't pay me. He said, I'll call Dice's agent. He started calling your agent a week ago. Your agent said, I don't know anything about this. Dice is on the road. I can't get him. And I said, well, as of right now, I haven't what gotten you're paid. is that I was on the road. Dice, what does that have to do with anything that you were on the road? I mean, I'm I got to wait for you to get off the road to get five grand? And I'm not, <laughs> no, when I come home, I take care of business. What's yeah, okay. And that's obviously two people in two vastly different ways of doing business. But but, but the, the, the I, like I said, it makes more sense that he had to take the whole wad, do yeah. something with it, and yeah. then kept working, obviously, and is using. It's almost like a pyramid scam. You're paying Peter. Yes. You're, you're paying Peter to pay Paul or whatever the fuck it. However yeah. it goes. Yeah. Which fire is burning the hardest? And I'll put that one out first, and I'll I'll take the damage on the other ones. You know, because that's more yeah. preferable. I I I think also consider this is 2006, so we didn't have smartphones, but we had mobile email, we had text messages, we got all these ways of communicating that we didn't have in the 1970s. So this yeah. whole idea of 10 days and phone calls and, and letters and no, no, this is if you have an agent, they all have email addresses in 2006. So, there's yes. A, and, and at the very least, the agent, you tell the agent to tell his agent uh, Dice is going on the road, whatever you will get the check by such and such a date. Even yeah. though, and, and at least at the least, there's the communication. It's almost it's no different than when Artie loaned money to all kinds of people, and then like Dan the song parody man, and then uh, you know he you know the poon hound, and uh, didn't get it back <laughs> until didn't like he didn't he didn't but he didn't say he had done it. Uh, Dan got guilty on the air and uh, said, okay, I, I owe Artie some money, and like the we're, Gary's like we didn't we weren't talking about you because he had loaned money to <laughs> probably Cabby and maybe KC as well. <laughs> I yeah. remember. Uh, <laughs> Garrett, he goes, uh, I loaned money to one guy. He's like waiting for a big windfall. And he goes, yeah. the weatherman who's predicting these windfalls is really wrong. <laughs> 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 but uh, like I owe a buddy. I like to know a buddy owes me rather from last August. I gave him a little bit to float him until he, he got his, his head above water. And um, he uh, but he'd been but I didn't know he'd also borrowed like thousands off of some friends. So when I saw him in the uh, the, the summertime, I just told him, he goes, look, I'm working. Da, 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 I can pay you back such and such in like in a month or two. I said, fuck me. Go like pay the other people you owe first. That's the priority. I, I know you're good for it. you're not going to welch. But it's been almost a year later and uh, I haven't seen anything. He, we're still keeping in, in touch. But I, I also knew that that was an amount that I could afford to lose if he decides, oh, I can't. I just I'll forget all about it. And then I, you know, I learned don't give that guy any money. Yeah, but so. you, the, the outcome of that is the, the money isn't for you essentially the important thing, but you will never look at him quite the same way again. No, no way. Not if I don't see it again. No. Yeah. And yeah, uh, I mean, I'll, and, and uh, I mean, and, and it depends. Like if I know that he's in some awful like like medical emergency or something, yeah. of course, I'll, you know, but uh, I don't. The other thing is I didn't want to, at the time I was hesitant because I go, you're already in a hole and I'm not I'm, if by giving you a little bit of money, I'm only helping you short term what are you doing to to make this better for yourself without me and without the other people helping you out and uh at any rate uh, with already i get his perspective it's like i'm not hearing anything i don't see any money and ultimately the real thing is he feels if it wasn't for me dice doesn't sell out that fucking thing and yes. i should be getting a hell of a lot more money that the basis of it is really more about that than the yeah. five grand that's yeah. just the icing on the shit cake yeah yeah well, when are you getting home so we can get that? Let me know. You're never going home again. I mean, now you're starting to piss me off. I mean, I want you to call me. Bull you never call me this week, ever. I never got a fucking phone call now, from you. Now you call me a liar because I did leave. I'm not calling you a liar. All I'm saying is maybe my phone fucked up. I didn't you know get a phone message from you. I'm calling you a liar. What I'm saying is I called you and said I need your agent's address. To send the check. Never got okay. that message. I yeah. gave you. Remember after the after the Borgata, we were sitting in your dress room. Yeah, we you said write down your corporation's name and your agent's name. I did. I handed you that piece of paper that night, thinking, okay, maybe I'll get it. You know, Monday. It's a Friday night. I and, know you needed it. And if you would have said, you want to know if you would have actually told me, can I just get paid that night in advance 
I would have had a check cut for you just to give you there. Oh, are you saying it's just, embarrassing to say that? He thinks he's supposed to just know that. No, they, no. no. Uh, is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying, what does it matter if I need the money or not? He's right. This is yeah. absolutely right. Yeah, yeah it's done. It's a non-point. Uh, Dice was. Dice was. Yeah, he's 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 bullshitting. I think so. And if 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 a loan has um, qualifiers on it, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, yes, but, absolutely. You know, it, it's a, a loan is a loan is a loan, and you pay back when you say you will, and you can't come back and say, well, you don't really need it this week, do you? I mean, you could get it next. You know, it, th then suddenly. <laughs> then suddenly you're into very murky waters with someone. It's a it's a whole can of worms. Yeah, but I can, I think I, I, oh sorry go ahead sorry I think like you already said often or you know we've said before on this on this show is that you know desperation and that's associated with addiction all these type of things does make someone do things that are morally reprehensible and I think maybe that's what we're seeing here maybe Dice was in really really precarious waters financially mm -hmm. and uh, he had to do this and uh, this is his way of trying to some way limit the damage and save face but he's uh, like you said he's got he hasn't really got a leg to stand on no and then and then people are going to go after Artie, like like some people are going to call in and say, "What are you doing? Like, honestly, you don't need that money. You're you're doing all right, whatever." And again, they're missing the point. Then Ralph calls in. When Ralph calls in, that's the worst because Artie knows this guy is good for nothing except yeah. you know cornholing Howard and uh, making him look like a uh, you know a, 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 an extra in an Avril Lavigne video. And then uh, all of a sudden. Uh, and also just to be a contrarian, which is, yeah, I, but, I, 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 I can be like that in my life too, but I stopped being like that when I was, I don't know, when I got to, to, to when I got to my twenties. <laughs> I think he's, yeah, I, yeah, Ralph was a contrarian, but I think also Ralph would do things that he felt may have been self-serving always. And I, in this situation, anything that normalizes Ralph's disgraceful behavior he will mm -hmm. try to get behind. And this is something that Ralph would try to normalize, which is borrowing money, not paying it back, uh, talking in circles, just being an, just being a shitty person. So he can identify with this. So he's yep. immediately going to side with, with Dice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Charles Manson had issues too, guys. Come on. Like, don't, yeah, no need to jail him. Needing the money, I just take care of it. He's Look, saying he I waits. All over. You had to drive 10 minutes to go do your gig. I went to a th few different cities. I come home. I'm going to cut. The check's been cut already because now. Now tell me you didn't talk to your agent yesterday. I did. I'm, I'm admitting to that. I talked to him yesterday. I say that I'm sending the check. Uh, he's he left me a message and said I talked to Dice, call me back. I didn't get a chance. But that's what the call was about. What do you think it was? I want to go out with the guy. <laughs> Dice, it's still <laughs> ten days later. Okay, so what do you want? A bonus? <laughs> no, I want my money. I don't want a bonus. I want the money. Well, we agreed. Why can't we get past this? Why? Why is it always about money? You're the one that even said to me before the gig. I don't even care if I get paid. And I said, No, I got to pay you. Dice, when did you get paid for the Borgata gig? They gave me a check, half a, half the check that night. Okay, so you couldn't give him half 250 to 2500 that night? <laughs> yeah, like this is this is one of the things when I, I, I'm I'm just curious, uh, anybody out, else out there that like when you got done a, a job for someone, you know, what's it been like for you guys? But uh, and so any QFers out there freelancing, like you're doing your own like renovations or you do, you know, landscaping, if you do any blue collar work and let us know how it works for you uh, in the comments section, because as far as I'm concerned, I like whenever a job was needed to be done, like moving, for example, helping a friend move, even if a friend wouldn't accept money, I always made like I made I'm not like that. I always find a way to put the fucking money somewhere in their jacket or something mm -hmm. like uh, I'm the guy that goes off to the bathroom and pays the bill for the fucking dinner before people have a chance to do anything like because I don't uh, if I want to if I say I'm paying for something, I'm paying for it. I don't like anybody getting in the middle of that. Um, and so, and maybe to a fault sometimes generosity, but, um, I mean, I've never, we know people who are down on their luck all the time, but Jesus Christ, you, you feel like shit until you've paid that person back. Yeah. We got, we had work done here in the house a couple of years ago. We got, it was a big enough job. We got the entire loft converted and got a bathroom up there and, 
you know, so it could be a master bedroom or whatever. And mm-hmm. it was, we had to take half the roof off and, you know, there was a lot in it. And the guy doing it is well known in the area. He's probably, I'm not going to say where he's from, but anyway, he's, because I don't identify him, but um, yeah, he, he uh, basically quoted me a price. And then in the meantime, after the quote, the war broke out in your, Ukraine and prices all went up by 20% for materials. Okay. So by the time he carried out the work, he said, I can, I'll stick to the price, but I'm going to need some cash. And every week he would call over and I would give him an envelope. Now, um, that was on a weekly basis. So he wanted to be paid weekly for the, so a week's week work done and then paid. And then it mm-hmm. went like that every week. So there was no, uh, no, it was all, I probably shouldn't be saying this, but it was kind of off the books. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it happens all the he time. He did a great we, job. We, we, did a great job. Yeah. I mean, he stuck to his price, so everyone was happy, apart from the revenue. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, the uh, the uh, why, mommy? Why are you baking a nail file in the cake <laughs> for daddy? <laughs> I Don't hope worry, this isn't like. Soon. Yeah, I feel like Cabby mentioned my Gulf War syndrome there, but um. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and okay. where'd you get the other half? Now, I didn't send the check till yesterday, because I came home Sunday. So how is that my problem? <laughs> no, it's not your problem. So I send the check. Now when I hear that, I'm hearing the phony phone call. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fuck off, Ralph. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good. Back to the accountant. I call the accountant. I give him your agent's number, and I say, cut the check, since I don't know why you talk about what you make on the air, it's stupid, but I told them, cut the check for Artie and send it to him. That's it. All right, well, so, I'll let you know when I get the check. Are you saying that guys could have uh, made that so, same phone call uh, from uh, the road, Artie? Uh, but I, don't make I guess, I mean, there's a lot of ways of getting no, in touch with people Howard, nowadays. Howard, number one, I never worked with the guy before, right? Right. So I'm thinking... You know, I wasn't thinking anyway. If if he wanted to check that night, that's all he would have had to say, and I would have taken care of it in advance of leaving L.A. Actually, I think. But then he still wouldn't have got the check that night. <laughs> the way you're saying yeah, it, it's, guys, guys. it's <clears throat> he's just getting tied up in minutia, and you know, there's no. If there was a genuine uh, reason going on here, there'd be very a very simple and short explanation for it. I and he's so, just go running through hoops, and and you can you can hear he's trying to, uh, as he's talking here, uh, push Artie to try and I suppose like a like a skilled barrister would, mm-hmm. pick apart Artie's reasoning and try to find a hole in it, and then put a you know <laughs> drive a, a wedge into that and just exploit it. And you can you know so he's he's asking Artie questions all the time as well. But uh, the more I listen to this, the more I think he he's uh, he's kind of panicked a little bit here, trying to come well, up with a. Well, yeah, because I think he also his, sees his any future sort of partnership, as he wants to call it, with Artie going up in smoke because of this issue. And certainly, when people uh, have issues with money, which is really always a problematic thing with mm. even the, even family, you know, um, then he, a lot of times it's it's unsurmountable for a lot of people. But you've known people like I've known people in my life who are they have a degree of charm. They can be funny. They're gregarious, and you like you know spending time with them. But then they'll do something, and you'll suddenly just feel a bit uncomfortable. And yeah. I've known people like that. I think Howard felt like that with Dice. I think Howard felt I can't really control this guy. I can't dominate him at all. And I'm just going to, he, he's too much of a liability to me because he's going to turn the tables on me and he's smarter than me. And I think, um, I, I think Dice strikes me as that type of person who he is highly competitive. He is a street fighting kind of attitude on him. And he's mm-hmm. also street smart and he could run rings around you. Now, he's not doing a great job here, but um, no. I think generally he he could. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, and you, you mentioned the show that the the reality show. He did a reality show uh, ages ago, before like w- like it was two thousand six. It was like, you know, meant to show his comeback, and it was a it was a disaster. I mean, he, he ended up playing yes. like a thousand seat or whatever, and they tried yes. to make film it, make it look like it was Madison Square Garden, but it did yeah. obviously it was a small place. Then they yeah. did a then they did a, a another one on I think it was HBO, but I can't 
I think it was. And Adrian Brody <laughs> showed up for one episode where he was supposed to mimic Dice. And then <sighs> he, he, they just started hanging out together and he became Dice more than Dice himself. So he started trying to horn in on his girlfriend. And, you know, <laughs> and I, it was actually kind of, you know, a little meta, but I thought it was quite funny for at, in, in, at parts. The show I remember was called uh, Dice Undisputed. Un- Undisputed. It was awful. That's, yeah, it was awful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you know, I I think it's worth mentioning just in case anyone thinks that I'm kind of shitting on Dice. One thing I would say about him is okay, his his Instagram, which is current, is incredible, right? Yeah. But also, if you uh, if you look at his kids, right, every t- everything I've read about his kids or hear about him that they're really well adjusted, mannerly, yep. nice kids, and that's a real testament to him as well. I think he, I think so. From what I can see, he's a, he's a great parent. Well, yes. And that's, so, uh, but what I would say is just, just don't, just don't give them advice about money. No, uh, God, no. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I think this is Dice giving Artie a little more credit. He doesn't think Artie's desperate for $5,000. Mm. So he's what, taking his time. He's getting that, home. I mean, he's going to earn. Why should that matter? I mean, Howard's not desperate not for his paycheck matter, coming right? next I week. I just expect it on time. <laughs> exactly. Right. What are you going to get me? It's, it's freaking six in the morning here. What are you going to get me mad? <laughs> that freaking tattoo. <laughs> Red sleeve. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> like, he, has, he, has the, he has the shirt pulled up as well so all the audience can see. Look yeah, exactly. Fucking Idiot. Christ. Bustara. <laughs> for, you know, for nothing. For nothing. For well, for five grand. I, I'm trying to team us up to do giant things, and, and you're, you know, for the five grand. <laughs> How's that, that makes you sound bad. No, it doesn't, it doesn't Dice. make me sound bad, Dice. <laughs> it makes it doesn't make me want to work with you again if I got to wait fucking two months for my money. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what do you want me to tell you? If you, if you want to do what you're doing, then do what you're doing. We teamed up to do big things together, right? Did we you two have a deal. talk? Oh man, that's 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 only going to make Artie even angrier because he knows you don't need I you need me, not the other way around, yeah. buddy. Yeah. And yes, you are a way better comic than I'll ever be, but not right now at this moment in time. Yeah, this like, is another this is another one of Dice's angles with, to deflect you, which is you know, look, think of the big picture. What you right. you know, why are you always thinking about money? It's, life is more <laughs> money doesn't matter. Yeah. It's right. about it's about it's about your craft. It's about leaving a legacy. It's about yeah. doing great things together. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Dice is taking all the money and he's panicked because you know, literally, money was everything in this. Money is oh, everything yeah. here. Oh yeah, for both parties. Yep. What? Yeah, well, that's the other thing. I don't, I don't know if Artie wants me to bring that right. up. Right? Did you have any kind see, of conversation? Artie doesn't want to tell. They see, Dice wants to team up with Artie, and Artie thinks the reason that Dice really wants to team up is he really wants me involved, uh-huh. and this that Dice's way to get involved with me is through Artie. Uh huh. No, that's not. Uh, that, but Artie's afraid one, to say uh, that. That's that's without question no, what's going it, on. It, Come on. Oh, uh, really? No, wait a minute. Really? No, no, Howard, please. I come on your show, I announce a show, when you say, you know, you got something to plug. You bet. Anytime yeah, you want. Sells out, right? That's right. Anytime you but, want. But who but who says why it's happening? I don't say anything. No, I say why it's happening. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it has nothing to do with getting close to Howard. Uh, although Dice is very, well, he became very adept at trying to keep all of his ducks in a row uh, and make mm-hmm. sure he could get on any every show he could for promotion. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was all about being in, in, in proximity to Artie. If you're with Artie and Artie's on the show, then you don't need to get close to Howard. And he knows he was never going to get back in close with, with Howard after, you know, um, calling him all kinds of shit and then getting back, you know. Uh, and it, he didn't care. It's more about the gigs. As long as he can have money coming in at these gigs, Dice is more, he's happier than a pig in shit. Well, yeah, and I think, uh, uh, you know, Dice probably realized by this stage, like you said earlier, that all these other avenues hadn't worked out. TV hadn't worked out, movies, there was nothing on the horizon, and shows were the only way he was going to get money in. And yep. he wasn't he wasn't a big a draw. He was, uh, as he thought he was. So this was this was the only way he was going to get, get money. And th- again, that speaks to uh, what our, we're thinking here the whole time, which is he was desperate for money. Yep. And that's why he took the five grand. <laughs> yep, absolutely. 
Yeah, Isn't but that I, what happened? I, 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 yeah, I but uh, but I don't know. Artie Artie feels he can go do these shows himself. Here's my thing, Dice. No, no, let me hear, hear what Artie the, has the to say. The, the room we played at the Borgata last week. Okay. I'm doing a show, two shows there, August 25th and 26th, by myself. Okay. Do you? And do, they're I both gonna sell. That. They'll both sell out in about four or five days, and I'll make probably. 11 times what I made with you there. Okay. Now why why would I want to why would I want to do work with you when I don't need it? Why, and why would you want to work with me? Know. You don't All give right. a you never saw me do stand up. It's not about the fact that you like the fact that I'm a comedian. I'm on the greatest show ever that can put people in seats. And you know, you want to you want to get those plugs. So uh, I, it's almost like I, you're I, patronizing I, me like, "Oh, you're a great comic. I want to work with you." No, you want to get plugs on the Howard Stern show, which Yeah. That's 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 definitely a part of it. There's no question. It's business. What like what uh, high profile comic has ever thought that Artie was really good? Well, like I don't think any of his peers probably rated him at all. I th- I think they probably looked at him and went, "Look, great storyteller, great on the air, funny, uh, like funny, but, yeah, fun, fun, funny, like witty, funny, witty, 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 yeah." But. Uh, his his stand up is hack, and he is only playing Carnegie Hall because of his radio persona. Yes, I'd say a lot of them. And yeah. already, I th- I think already. Well, bef- after the drugs took over, he when he started comparing himself to Richard Pryor, that was kind of that was a, the nadir, really. But um, mm. he, I think, if you asked him honestly, and he'll he'll say it himself. You know, it's self deprecating, but I think he does believe it. He goes, uh, it was a Greg Fitzsimmons uh, interview where he said. Look, maybe I'll just be a hack the rest of my life. It's better than, you know, driving a taxi, you know, making money doing comedy, but being a hack the rest of my life. I, I, I think driving a taxi might be slightly better than, uh, you know, being surely, for example. But yeah. uh, it is like if you're successful, you're making money. Well, then you don't give a fuck if your jokes are original or not. You just want to get paid. Um, but I agree. I think amongst his peers and he would probably tell you the same thing. The, the money he was getting for these gigs is the money that uh, a David Tell should be getting in terms of brilliance. Yes, yes. You know. And like, yeah, I think you're right. I think um, there are different levels uh, of hackery. You know what I mean? You can be a very successful hack, and there's mm-hmm. been many of them. Um, yep. Who was that guy? Who was that guy, the guy from the south used to say get her done who's that oh guy, uh, the larry comedian? the cable larry the cable yeah like guy. people like that you know these were guys but he was selling out arenas uh with 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 cash raises and all that and yeah. you know uh but then you've surely sitting there in his uh in his uh fucking place <laughs> in alabama and his, <laughs> yeah, he's sitting, edge, not he's sitting there <laughs> in his sordid little grief hole basement making fun of uh some guy who's you know Far more on the balls of his ass than uh, Dice is here. So there's different levels to desperation, I think. Oh, no kidding. Oh, and the Shuley Network guys, uh, 491, I think, paying customers now, paying patrons. So I I was off when they said 500 by August, but uh, I knew I was I knew where the trend was leading to. So. You know, Can I'm, we get I'm, a live ticker? Can we get a live ticker for the? <laughs> it's like it's like the reverse of the Jerry Lewis telethon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and at the end, we'll all go. You'll never walk alone. We'll sing you. You'll never walk alone. <laughs> did you ever? Did you ever see the uh, SCTV sketch? The Jerry uh, like Martin Short doing Jerry Lewis yeah, live on the yeah, Champs Elysees. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Oh fuck! And at the end, yeah. at the end, <laughs> the, the piano guy fucks up and he goes, <laughs> Louis. That's the cue. <laughs> and then he fucks and screams at him for not getting it right. When I do the cry, you do the cue. Cry, <laughs> cue. You like your job? Do it. <laughs> There's something amazing about that because when you watch that, you think, oh, that's just a comedy show and that's, you know. But there there's there's footage of, of things like that really happening. And, and like oh, that's yeah. quite well observed. And I always think of the um, Casey Kasem. I mean, that's yep. the, so the greatest audio I've ever heard in my life when he's there going, and here we have a song about a duh, you know, and then he's just like, oh, you come out of those goddamn high tempo, you know, oh, yeah. I, have to, I have to talk about a fucking dog dying. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Those so are the great. best clips. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Like I play, I played the Ernie's some of the Ernie Anderson clip with, uh, with CA Thompson on the show. And, uh, I mean, America's funniest people was not a, a I don't know. It was an international hit. I know, I know in Canada we saw it as well. Um, I'm sure most countries had their own regional version of that, but to hear him go like, uh, you know, I'll read whatever fucking dick fuck thing you want. <laughs> <laughs> this guy famous for network broadcasting, you know, and you yeah, get to hear him yeah. swearing. It's it's just like that. Uh, um, I think I said it before. Dick Cavett was talking about uh, he was on an elevator with Jack Benny, and you know you got to go, you got to go with go Google to get these references, guys. But all the people got on there and they asked them the same questions. You know, uh, are you really that cheap? You know, are you bad at playing the violin? You know, why don't you pay Rochester? Da, da, da. And then they all filed out. And <laughs> Dick said, uh, you know, Mister Benny, um, it must get you know, really frustrating. So many years hearing the same questions. <laughs> he imitated Jack. Jack Benny goes. You know, kid, and he put his hand on on my shoulder. He said, "You know, kid, sometimes you you just want to tell them to go fuck themselves." <laughs> <laughs> Jack Benny, a guy who worked clean. <laughs> yeah, no, and Jack Benny was also the kind of he traded off the nice guy thing. You know, he really did, and his reputation totally. was for being a nice guy. I, you know, what I am um, recently, I got into a bit of a. I couldn't, I wasn't sleeping well. And when I wake up in the middle of the night, I went onto YouTube and they have a load of the Jack Benny shows from the 40s, the radio show. And I started listening. To, I got listened to loads of them. And he had that kind of, he had the, the his valet driver, the black guy, yeah, from Rochester. Rochester. Yeah. And he had, so I started listening to loads of them. And, um, it, you know what? Some of it's great and it's aged quite well. And obviously, it's, you have those ads for, uh, jello and all <laughs> you yeah. know it's re it, but it's really really great to listen to all those old things and yeah uh, uh definitely a golden age compared to where we are now i think for you know in terms of radio and the what do they call it the theater of the mind yeah well they uh, the, there's a the, uh, yeah i'm sure you've seen it mel blank went on with him on the tonight show and uh yeah, when, yeah. when they what that yeah, one great. clip where he goes can you do an english horse <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> I mean, never very rarely you see Carson lose it out and yeah. he was you know but he was a magician when he started and then started doing comedy but he had such an appreciation for voice talents because he loved yeah. radio he loved radio guys and Jack yeah. Benny god that fucking the Mexican sketch <laughs> yeah, that's great that's so just great. a classic yeah it really is I, I totally get so you don't think working with me? Okay, so you're the greatest comic ever. No, 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 Dice, the reason I work with you, the reason I work with you was because you're an icon. You're one of my heroes. The, the reason I did this is because, look, it's not, and this is why I told Howard. Howard thinks I should ask for more money. I'm like, no, it's not about the money. It's about the fact that I'm getting to work with a guy who is a true icon. He's a legend, and it was something I could tell my kids one day. I opened up for Dice, but teaming up with you, why don't we just go make our own money ourselves? You know, why do we got to so team up think, together? You don't think it could benefit you and us as a team teaming up together and doing giant places. You don't think that's strong? Uh, well, I, to tell you the truth, I, I don't, I'd rather work by myself. But if that's what you want to do, that's up to you. You, I heard when I started doing Howard, my attendance record went up immediately. He gave me an outlet. Uh, it, it, it's going great between us. He gave me my own show to do. My attendance at my shows have gone up, I don't know, 80% since I went on Howard. And no one knows that more. Okay, so, the, uh, so he's 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 at least uh, you know uh, adroit enough to just admit that mm. that he definitely got a bump. When he, in two thousand he tried to do uh, Madison Square Garden again, he did, but it was the year of the uh, the Subway Series. The the Yankees were playing the Mets in the World Series, and uh, he he blamed like lower ticket sales because of that. But he still sold something like ten thousand seats at uh, Madison Square Garden after a long long hiatus, and he said it was due to really plugging on O and A. Right. Okay. And being in studio and, you know, just riffing with them the way they would have all kinds of comics and stuff. Um, and had he been able to get on Stern, he would have probably filled the place up as well. Yeah. I, if he was bad, you know what Howard's like, if there were anyone who was bad mouthing him, he would probably, and he probably, Howard would know he needs me for these gigs. So I'm going to cut that off. But yeah, yeah I think ONA would have been on terrestrial then, would they? Because yep. XM. Yep. 
they were they they started with XM when it launched, I think, or soon after, which would have yeah, been two thousand and two, two thousand three. I think I think two thousand four they finally started at S at at XM. Uh, they, but they had a that that hiatus with a couple of years that where they couldn't. Uh, uh, they were just being paid to sit at home basically. And oh, they're um, on gardening leave, yeah, because they yeah. the the cathedral stunt or something was it? That's right. Yeah. And uh, so, so Dice was definitely like, if that was gone, then where am I going to fucking promote? You know, uh, I think, yeah, it's like uh, already saying I wanted to work with an eye. Like, I, I, uh, I understand that, but it's not. He's not the same guy he was, and you know, it's not the same thing. It's a bit like me saying I'd love to go and see Paul Diano live. You know what I mean? But it's it's not 1980 anymore. He's in a mm. fucking wheelchair now. You know what I mean? It's not the same thing. Well, so, yeah. Um, it's, yeah, like never, never meet your, never work with your heroes. What's sure? your take? What's your take on those, um, those legends matches where you know all the football, the old timers get together? To me, I think it is kind of, it's, it's just a, it's just a, maybe it's a tricks an emotional chord. What I'm talking about, guys, is when, um, it's like old timers hockey, like when all the veterans come together and they play like a charity game, and it's you know, mm. but it's same, same with football, uh, American European football, where all the, you know, they'll put together, you know, a Liverpool. Uh, yes. you know, XL versus, uh, you know, the, or the, the, you know, the, the, the Liverpool 11 versus, you know, inter Milan, inter Milan legends, mm-hmm. you know, and they'll, the money's going to such and such. And if you're not going for like, some brilliant game, you're actually going to see some of yeah. these guys to see what they look like. And also because maybe you never got to see them in the first place. And maybe yeah. there's a bit of magic still within those legs sometimes. Um, I would say that I, I I think if you watch someone like Zidane even now, if you were to see someone like Zidane playing five aside in an indoor, uh, he would just be spectacular. And the reason why a lot of the guys, well, all of them have to retire, is not because they're losing skill at all, and they're not losing their mind in terms of their football mind, any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. It's because the body is breaking down. They they're not physically able to keep going. They can't yeah. run as fast. They can't, so they're losing speed. They're not losing the skill. They're not losing a lot of these things. So yeah. if you go and watch a, um, a guys in their late forties, early fifties, as long as they're all at the same level, right? I think you can see really good stuff because you can see them still show a bit of the skill they used to have. Now they're not as sharp, whatever, but you can. They still have the mind. The one thing I would say that was really sad. I saw one time was Gaza, yeah, playing in a match, and he couldn't even kick the ball. Now he probably had a few, a few beforehand, maybe, <laughs> which is <laughs> even more depressing, you know. But so I think there is a fine line there. Uh, but I would love to see some of the. I remember like Jan Malby seeing him play one of these games and he was as big like he had a belly a proper big belly right but he was still able to play a cross field pass like 80 yards pinpoint yeah. accuracy you know what I mean <laughs> that, that's what I find amazing there was a Greek yeah. midfielder Jorgos Karagounis he uh, he played for all kinds of teams and uh, by the end I think he played for Fulham I think the last year of his, his career yeah. and he scored a couple bangers uh, he's the one guy who's in now in his fit probably early fifties or late, uh, maybe yeah, early fifties who could arguably play on a, a, a side like in the midfield and, and in, in bursts still show what he used to yeah. be able to do. Come on for the last 20 minutes or something. Yeah. Something like that. And then actually yeah. it was German players back in the day that would often play well into their thirties still. And as strikers and even as defenders, because of, they still have the brains. Well, you know, look what we had this week. On Tuesday night, we had Pepe for Porto at 41 years of age, playing not a full game. He played into extra time. He played 120 minutes at 41. Amazing. And he played well. He played well. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I've always hated him, but he played well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll play, a little, we'll play a little more and then we'll wrap this one up for, for this particular half. More than me, man. I know. Let me talk a minute. Now I hear about Artie Lang and how terrific Artie is. So I think, you know what? Maybe it would be a good idea because guys are doing this to team up with Artie. Let's see what happens. So I approach you. I'm doing this Borgata gig. And I say, look, Artie, what, what do you want for the gig? Because I wouldn't want to insult you either. So I, I throw a number and you go, you know what? That's fine because the next night I'm at some club in uh, Pittsburgh and I'm making X amount, which I wouldn't say on the air. All right, great. So we do the gig. All that happened was a misunderstanding of when you got the pay, okay? I took care of it. 
But if you don't want to work with me, that's up to you. And if you think I can't do bigger places without you, well, you're mistaken. And if you can do two and three nights at the Borgata and, and in Vegas and bigger arenas without me, then go do them. I just think you're a good guy. I thought we, we got along terrific, and I wanted to move forward with it. Dice, honestly, I would have opened up for you at the Borgata for nothing, just for the story. I really would have. That's how much I respect you. But honestly, the guys team up for those tours because they have trouble selling tickets on their own. I'm blessed with the fact that I'm on a show. And look, two years from now, if I'm not on the show anymore, I could be begging guys to give me work. That's how comedy is. But right now, I got to make as much money as I can. And right. I can do it on my own. Uh, and that's up to you, though. See? Yeah, he hit the nail on the head. Uh, typically, yes. unless it's it's only like uh, certain gigs that they will, you know, co-headline or though two people go out on tour. Like, uh, I think it was Dave. Uh, sorry, it's Dave Attell and... Um, What's his name? The the roast, uh, the roast guy, Jeffrey uh, Jeffrey Ross. Ross. They went on. They did a bit of a tour. Now I think David tells physically pretty rickety these days. I think he needs a cane. Um, I'm not sure what his what his issue is. <laughs> He's probably still chain smoking fucking Marlboro Reds. But um, <laughs> he uh, but they they went on tour for something. And that's because, of course, Jeff Ross is a roaster. I guess he just roasts the audience. But Dave has just brilliant fucking material. I'd kill to see Dave Attell in, in yeah. concert. But he, they yeah. decided let's let's make it just to let's top end let's let's front load a show with two people, two headliners, as opposed to shittier comic headliner, and see if we can't get more people up. Because it was also like during the pandemic or just past the pandemic. I think yeah. they need that extra. A bit of oomph to get people out and, uh, you know, forego the risk of COVID. Yeah. And, I, I, I know, you know, Artie's also sadly prophetic as well when he talks about people are going to be, I'm going to be begging guys for in a couple of years. He's oh, yeah. going to be begging, you know. Begging and, Scott uh, Salem apparently for, for yeah, money, for charity, money, that story. Say, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's sad, it's sad but uh, God, I could listen to, um, uh, listening just to D Dice talk, you know, he's just, <laughs> he's just his uh, his his accents and his way, his delivery is so musical. <laughs> yeah, it's lovely just to listen to. <laughs> uh, I, well, I mean, I, I never, I never, I always wondered how that came off to uh, people in like uh, English speakers in Europe, uh, and then of course in the UK and and I and the Repu and the Republic of Ireland. What? Is this annoying? Is this New York speak? Is it is it quaint? Is it charming? Does it depend who's doing it? I mean, Mary Marianne from Brooklyn sounds like a cunt in any language. So yes, uh, but but Dice, for example, or that that guy Goody Dickman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's something endearing about that accent. Well, it's funny because I I I was looking at you know Wayne. I think is polarizing. You know, with his accent, I think with that Boston accent, some people seem to have you know, not many, obviously, but. Some people seem to be have an issue with it, but I've never I like, and I'm I thought people would have an issue with my accent, but I think that accent is I love that accent because it reminds me maybe it's because of um, Cheers, you know, but uh, yeah. from growing up, who was the guy uh, with the tash, the postman? Shit, Cliff. Cliff, yeah, it's it's kind of in that world, you know, but there's accents that that really bother me. Uh, Australia is one. Um, South Africa sometimes. Yeah, maybe it's just that kind of <laughs> I don't know what it is, but uh, yeah, like uh, now uh, Dice just sounds <laughs> Dice is just hilarious. Anyway, guys, uh, we're gonna leave that one uh, for the next for the uh, we we only got a, 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 a like a third of it uh, done, but I'm gonna go through the uh, the next bit of it uh, when I get a chance and make sure there's no dead dead stuff in there uh, because the callers start calling in and that's when it it also gets really good and there will be probably a wrap up show. I'll see if that's any good as well. This might be a three parter, but uh, mm -hmm. we know you, we we we're pretty sure you guys will enjoy it. Any shout outs? Uh, shout out Liverpool Sunday, Man United. That's my shout out. Got to yeah. win. Yeah, that's my... he... come on, you Reds. That's my shout yeah. out. Let's see another seven nil. Oh God, can you imagine? <laughs> I just I I, th I I've think I've already seen um, the memes. <laughs> yeah, I'm supposed to be going over to Liverpool in a few weeks. Uh, the date hasn't been confirmed. So uh, I think it might be a bit emotional. I think I think what Klopp has done, I think he's the best manager they've had since Shankly, to be honest, when you think of what he's done. Both similar. They came into teams that were just, 
just absolutely floating in mediocrity and and lifted them up to be hopefully champions again. Yeah, this May. I, we'll I think what, a lot of the pundits have been going on like who's better, da da da. But like it's 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 two different coaches. But I think if you put Klopp in charge of City, they become as successful as they are. And I think if you put Pep in charge of Liverpool at the time. Uh, he he would get them successful eventually as well, but it would be a very different looking. It's just that the style would be quite different, and it, I don't think it'd be nearly as entertaining. Klopp really did pick the right team. I think you look when you think about it. Pep has made great teams winners, whereas Klopp has made average teams winners. I think that's the difference. And yep. I'd love to see how Pep would get on with a Burnley for a season. Sure. I think he'd do well. I think because I think he is a good motivator. I think he is a great manager. Yeah. But I think he's always had uh, unlimited money, uh, always. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's and that's where you put the asterisks next to the guy and say, well, like, yeah, what, what, yeah, what could you do with reduced funds? What could you sure. do with a, a transfer window that you did, could you weren't allowed to buy any players? What could you do with you know, yeah, exactly, a lower rent team like Celta Vigo instead of you know, yeah, uh, Atletico Madrid or some you know some team with actual financial backing. Um, and uh, and and it's and what we saw when Liverpool ended up getting um, Allison and uh, Van Dijk was yeah, you at some point you do have to break the bank a little bit to get that extra bit of the machine that actually makes everything work that much better. But whatever they've spent big, they've always spent well, you know, pretty, and, um, almost, all, like, pretty much, for, especially yeah. in the last, in the last eight years for certain, most of the time. But we'll see what happens when Klopp leaves. Uh, I had noticed last night, our friend Alonso, Zabi Alonso, uh, getting two goals in injury time to win. Yep. Which is amazing. Amazing. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, so. it's a very Liverpool esque um, yes. way to finish your game. Yeah, fingers crossed. We'll see. Yeah. Anyway, guys, take care. We love you. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks, folks. Well, just real quick, I was also calling because uh, I just wanted to Bye. see my two <laughs> on the see you later. 15th of June. Thanks, Ari. Back back. <laughs> back back. All right, buddy. Back back. Eric, what, I couldn't hear you. What did you say? I said that. Sure, yeah, Take care, man. <laughs> Don't ever call back. <laughs>